What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Fox Sports The Gambler YouTube channel. My name is Sean Bernard, and I'm back with some NBA picks and plays for tonight. Uh, only one game on the NBA slate tonight. The playoffs cooling down a little bit from that opening round. We saw the Heat take down the Bucks in five games last night. A huge shocker there with Jimmy Butler doing his thing. Uh, before we get into it, I will recap my picks from yesterday. Not the most successful day uh, in the betting slips. We went two and three on the day to review a little bit. I had Jared Allen over 21 and a half points and rebounds. Uh, and to go along with this, Cavs minus five as well, minus five and a half. Yeah, the Cavs got their butts kicked. And at the root of this was Jared Allen. He has not looked good all series. I expected him to respond, and I thought this is where the difference would be. That was not the case whatsoever. He played like he was scared, and, and that's where the Knicks dominate on this game. He made Mitchell Robinson look like Will Chamberlain just dominating him, and these two kind of came together that it did not work out. So Jared Allen even seeing, seeing himself benched for a decent portion of the game. So rough start to the day and two losses there. Uh, Kevin Herter also did not come through on his over 14 and a half. Uh, a guy who had continued his struggles throughout the, the series. He had some moments where it looked good. He, he wasn't out of the running for most of the game, but he could not pull it off and get the job done. Uh, on the other side of things, the Warriors minus one and a half did cash there. So uh, a little bit of side of life and Grizzlies minus four went to, went through as well. So two and three on the day. That brings us to six and four throughout the two days of picks that I have dropped after that four and one start for the first game. So hopefully we'll get back after it here. Uh, like I said, just one game of action on the slate. That is the Atlanta Hawks versus Boston Celtics. And I have four picks that I like in this one. So to get right into it and to tease a little bit, I think the underdogs may be barking and to start off with, the Celtics are seven-point favorites in this matchup. The Hawks plus 240 on the money line. The over-under set at 231 and a half. So take a look back at this series and how things have gone so far. Celtics started off hot, won the opening matchup 112 to 99, won game two 119 to 106. So they took both matchups at home. The under cashed in both of those games. Game three in Atlanta, the Hawks secured the win 130 to 122, uh, and then lost to the Celtics the following game 129 to 121. Hawks answered in Game 5 to keep their season alive, winning without DeJounte Murray, 119-117. to 117. We cashed on the uh, Trey Young points and assists at 38.5 in that matchup. He ended with 51, so that was a, an easy win there. Uh, and yeah, so here's where we are. 3-2 series, Celtics hold the lead, win or go home for the Atlanta Hawks. This game will be back in Atlanta at home. Number one for the picks, my favorite pick of the day. That is over 231 in this matchup. The Hawks are the third highest scoring team in the NBA at 118.2 points per game. When they're at their best, they're running and gunning. They're playing fun. They get their style. And we've seen a little bit more of that of late. It looks like they have some of their swagger back that they're getting on the same page. I like that they're going to be in front of the home crowd. It gets rowdy in that Atlanta stadium. They got some Migos blaring. The, there's a vibe in there. People dancing in the crowd. It's a, a, a unique vibe for a basketball stadium and something that I think translates to high pace. Uh, running gun and Trey Young doing his thing. So I think this 231 is going to cruise over. Uh, the two games that have been played in Atlanta so far, uh, the numbers finished at 252 and 250. So that's 20 points of wiggle room with the over. The over is three and two on the series so far. It was those first two games that went under where the Celtics just dominated the pace and control uh, at home in front of their, their home crowd there. I don't think that's going to be the case. And I, I think the Hawks are playing much better basketball. And it's been them that have been the difference in reaching this. So that is my favorite play of the night at the over 231. Next up, I have Trey Young over nine and a half assists. I'm I'm blown away by Trey Young. I mean, I feel I, I know I said this on the first one, but I think the narrative has swung so far that he's now become underrated, that people don't appreciate how gifted this guy is as a basketball player. And for sure, he has his flaws. He's not perfect. He's not a good defender. He's incredibly ball dominant, all the same stuff. But you won't find very few. You will find very few NBA players with the amount of confidence and guts that this guy has to step into center stage. And while he's pulling up, hitting game winning threes, as he did to keep their, their series alive. The area of his game, which is the most special to me, is his playmaking. The way he can manipulate a defense, feel the style. He absolutely eats off lobs with Clint Capella, who I will touch on in a second. Uh, he's also great at finding the spot-up shooters, drawing attention. And the way he can just manipulate things with his eyes, with the control of the ball, uh, I think his assist is, is going to cash here. Over in the regular season, he averaged 10.2 assists per game. So far in the playoffs, that number is exactly the same, 10.2 assists through the first five games in this matchup. The over 9.5 assists there, it's at plus 115 there. I'm surprised to see that in plus money. I think there's great value in that. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a whole, the series, he, he put forth 8 assists in Game 1, 6 assists in Game 2, 9 assists in Game 3, and then 15 assists in Game 4, 13 assists in Game 5. So along with the Hawks finding their swagger and doing their thing, at the heart of this is Trey Young, and I don't think that that's going to stop here. It will be interesting seeing DeJounte Murray back in the mix, that them having to split the ball up a little bit, Trey Young not having all those opportunities. 
But at the end of the day, he's their money man. He's their playmaker, and he's going to have the ball a ton. If anything, that's another weapon that I think Trey Young can utilize. So I like the over for his assist there. Number three, I have Clint Capella over 18 and a half points and rebounds. That's at minus 120 value. Uh, he averaged 12 points and 11 rebounds throughout the regular season. This has gone down a little bit in the playoffs. He hasn't been a guy that's fully found his stride yet. Averaging just eight and eight. He's had a couple bad games to, to drag that down. At his totals combined for points and rebounds so far, he had 20 in game one, 11 in game two, 21 in game three, 17 in game four, and just 11 in game five. Uh, I think they got to get back to the well. Clint Capella is a key part of their offense when they're functioning the whole way. The pick and roll between him and Trey Young is super effective and just really brutal to stop. Robert Williams is the guy that's going to be tasked with that for Boston. Al Horford just does not have that verticality anymore. And Boston has also played around with going small a little bit. So if that's something that happens, if Blake Griffin gets some run as their primary big man, I expect I expect Clint Capella to eat, and I think he cruises past this number. So 18.5 to me is too low for that. He's a, a real deal terrific rebounder. He's got ridiculous wingspan, and his catch radius is insane. So he's going to feed off those pick and roll opportunities, look for putbacks, and I think he cruises past that. And last up here, I have the Hawks plus seven here. Maybe I'm in my head about the underdogs after the heat last night and everything, but this Hawks team, they look like the Hawks team that we thought they were becoming, that they were going to be this tough-nosed, scrappy team. They're back, and I think that shows tonight. I'm not confident enough to pull the trigger on the money line, like I said, plus 240 value, but I do think they could win this game and that enough to give me that seven-point wiggle room. I'm ready to jump on it. With everybody back in frame, DeAndre Hunter playing good basketball, DeJounte Murray back on the court playing in front of the home crowd. This is not going to game, not going to be a game that they let slip away. I think Quinn Snyder has done a terrific job writing the ship, making sure these guys are somewhat on the same page and things are clicking again. So I think the Hawks hang in there. They make life nearly impossible for the Celtics team. And I think that this extends to a game seven. So I do believe that the, the Hawks are going to win this game. I'm not confident enough to pull the trigger on that money line, but I will take those seven points as an insurance policy. So expect this one to be a hard fought matchup for the Hawks to play that don't care, don't don't mind, doesn't matter style of basketball that they do when they're at their best for Trey Young to be leading the charge in this. And I think that plus seven is the play here. So yeah, I have four plays for tonight to run through them one more time. The Hawks plus seven, Clint Capella over 18 and a half points and rebounds. The over at 231, which like I mentioned, is my favorite pick in this. And then Trey Young over nine and a half assists. So Appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure to drop a like on this video, a subscribe on this channel. I'll be back with some more NBA picks throughout this playoffs. Hopefully we'll get back on track tonight. I'm excited about these. And let's hope that the uh, Hawks can come through, beat up on the Celtics a little more, and uh, keep their legs working ahead of the potential Sixers series. So thanks again for watching. Sean Bernard signing off.